Hi everyone, hello. This is Pino Trogo from San Francisco State University and this is the introduction to drawing for designers class. And today we're gonna do a high horizon line two point perspective. Uh, we're gonna draw your cube, um, which might look something like this. And um, we're gonna do a version where we actually do it with tools, okay? Uh, completely with tools. Uh, in the afternoon, I'll record a, a, a video doing it just with one straight edge. So kind of freehand hybrid, hybrid, uh, but, the, but this one will be just straight um, using tools. So in, um, in I learned what, and, and the drawing will look um, somewhat like this. Well, mine will look exactly like this actually, uh, because that's the one I'm gonna draw. Yours will look you know, like, your, like your design. And in I learned for that version, you have um, two. You have two options actually. You can you can either um, download and print these two uh, sheets, which are regular letter size sheets. Okay, and I made um, little registration marks. So what you need to do is cut cut one of them. Uh, in the mark that's closer to the edge. It's one of these marks, the one close to the edge and then tape them together and you'll just have to match um, and you'll see so that also your squares match, okay? So in this system, what, what you will do is basically draw directly on this one. Um, because the cube is placed at 30, 60 degrees here, which is the, the dimen the, um, the angle of your of your triangle, uh, which makes it easy to draw these lines, which are the lines that go to the, the create the diagonal point from those we get the vanishing point and you have to refer to the other video to see how that works. Um, but this just makes it easy, but it's already drawn for you. So um, you can start building it um, based on what's already here, okay? The other option, um, if you can't print, for example, is to download this um, instruction sheet that actually already has, but it's small. Um, the uh, the full con well the full construction of the of the cube outline, but it also gives you the dimensions. Okay, so this is seventeen by eleven. The sheet meaning you have to do the same thing. You have to tape two sheets together. Okay, so if you're up to it, you can do it. You know this way. Um, but then for the assignment, even though the older video shows both cubes, um, you can just do one view, okay? And let's just say that it is a symmetrical view of your cube. Okay, if you recall, you, if, you, if you look at your cube, you might have this view, which is symmetrical down the middle like this, left and right, or asymmetrical like this, so the left and the right look different. Um, and that will, I think, will make the, uh, the perspective, perspective be more obvious because you have see, similar triangles in the back and in the front, and these are smaller, even though they're flipped. Um, so it gives a better sense of the perspective, I think, than this view. However, again, if you wanna do them both, uh, do them. Um, Oh yeah, there is a slight difference between, between the instructions for doing it from scratch and, uh, and this handout. And I, after I did it, I realized, oh yeah, that's slightly different, but it's not a huge difference. The difference is that here we're placing the station point somewhere between the two cubes in order to have a balanced view so that one on the left is not like too distorted. Um, and that's what happens in this other view. The station point is actually pointing to this cube. So you, you can see the most of the composition it's shifted to the left. And so when you build it, you will see the cube on the left is a little bit kind of stretched this way, right? Stretch in this direction. Um, however, right now, if you use this system, because you're putting your station point right in front of that first cube, um, that's actually really nice if you're just drawing one because that cube is gonna be 
kind of in the center of, of almost in the center of your of your field of vision. Okay, so um, just keep that in mind. Okay, and because now in the in this demo I'm going to show just the one on the right, it also works out for me that um, that the station point is not there. Right, which would be more balanced, but it's rather here, which is in front of the in front of the cube, more in front of the cube on the right. Okay. So what else can I say? Maybe I'll just mention one other little thing, which is that when I do the one freehand um, in the afternoon, I might change even more the um, the the settings in terms of like how far I am from the object. Um, and that would be the main difference. Um, and also, let me just quickly now do a refresher about perspective. Let's see, are we still sharp? Yeah. Um, yeah, so if you recall, when we did the isometric view, Right, everything is parallel. So these sets of lines are parallel and these are parallel too, right? But now in the perspective, we have converging lines, right? However, if you noticed, we're keeping these lines um, also parallel, right? And that's because it's, it looks better in the drawing. So it's not like overly dramatic. Um, I was thinking of that shot where I don't know, is it Skywalker? I always go back to Star Wars where they're fighting on that bridge suspended over the giant well. There, of course, you have, let's see how it would look. You have three-point perspective because you know, you're looking down and so everything that's looking down is gonna look in perspective even there, okay? Um, so, but for most purposes for us, we're just gonna keep this uh, parallel and just use these two sets as being Converging, okay? And the system, just again, very quickly, but I'm gonna use um, white paper because I need the tracing. <laughs> so we have uh, a picture plane. We put the object touching in plan view, uh, the picture plane. And then we put the station point somewhere down there. Then we find this these points, we call them diagonal points. Let's see, there, diagonal points. We bring that down, and if you remember the model, it's up or down, depends. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, make sure you go see this video from the previous assignment that explains how this construction works and how eventually um, you know, that gives it the results that we want, okay? Um, so this is how we find the vanishing point, left and right. Um, and then we establish also a ground line, right? And we put, we put the cube here just for reference for the height, okay? By the way, in this drawing, the, uh, the cube is actually three inches, okay? Doesn't matter. I mean, in fact, when you print it, don't worry about how big it is because it, you'll have the template. Um, and then, so this is where we want to go. And what we did was, okay, because this is touching the picture plane, um, it means that it's a full size, okay? So if I project this line here, I get the first edge, okay? And I'm gonna use a different color. As soon as I have that, I can just simply go the vanishing point, and I made a mistake already. <laughs> we don't want to go there. That's not the vanishing point. We want to go. Uh, let's see. We want to go here. Right? So, so far, so good. That's pretty straightforward because, well, because you have all the information. Now, the question is what these two edges are. And to find that, we um, 
we bring these points to the station point like that. And when it intersects the picture plane, we bring them down like that vertically, right? And we get that edge. And so now we have three hedges. So the process is the same. We're gonna do exactly the same thing. Oops. The, uh, the fact that it is a cube means that once I have this and once, and I do the top now just by simply connecting these to the opposite, opposite edges. This, this should be somewhere here. Um, I can now do a lot more by simply finding, instead of constructing, for example, if I wanna know the midpoint there, instead of doing this process, I don't need to because I can simply do a diagonal in other words, everything behaves in perspective, even when it's inside this, this cube, right? So once I do that, then I can just connect this. I find the middle there. I can do more diagonals. And basically I find my entire grid, okay? It doesn't look very much in perspective there, but what it should look like should be something that's, you know, more, progressive okay and there we're going to then build our shapes okay so this entire construction really after you make the main cube the big cube right not your design yet um, then what you're going to use later is really just the vanishing points and a combination of lines here you don't need to do any more of this okay um, but that's the that's the process. That's how you could, in theory, find every single point using this process, this system, okay? All right. So what I'll do now is I will, I will actually draw directly on, the, uh, on that template that you could download from, the, uh, from iLearn, from the, from the website. And uh, if you decide to do it from scratch, well, basically you just need to draw this. Um, uh, again, it will have the, st the station point a little bit over. So I don't know, you can, you can move that, that line um, if you wanted to change it slightly. Um, you can also use, by looking at this online, even if you cannot print it, you could reconstruct this because I give you all the measures. And if you do that, this is the first spot that you want to start from, okay? And that tells you where it is. And this tells you where it is, five from the right and four and a half from the top, roughly, okay? It's not so important. Once you establish it, then it's important that you make everything else um, be coherent to that spot. Okay, so why don't I do that? Without further ado, as they say, and let's see if we can get it, get it right. So I'm going to pad my, um, my, my board here with a few sheets of um, 11 by 17 paper because that's, you know, gives me a nice, nicer drawing surface. Yeah. So download these two sheets. Um, if you can print them at 100%, that would be better because it, then it's a little bit bigger. Um, so just say no scaling when you're printing them, okay? Um, oh yeah, I need to cut, uh, let's see, where do I cut it? I need to cut, I guess I made it so that it cuts right at the edge of this. By the way, I drew, I drew this first left side of the drawing. Let me explain that actually. Um, because of these angles, you see how one cube touches, but then when you put the one next to it, touching it this way, the edge of that cube, it doesn't touch anymore the picture plane. So that's a little bit tricky because it's like, where is it exactly? So that's why I've already drawn that, that spot here for you, okay? It's just an extra little thing that's already there. Um, so, but now let's, let's cut this up. So when we're pretending we're doing the homework. Uh, 
um, for this perspective, it would be nice if you have, yeah, at least 12 inch uh, ruler, right? Because you need to go a little far. If you don't, then you have to put the triangles together. It gets a little cumbersome and awkward. Um, so what I'll do is I'll cut it so that I actually keep this line so that I get to see it, okay? Let's, let's see. I mean, you don't eat, you don't actually have to cut it. I mean, if you had a, if you put it against the window, you would be able to see it. And um, just tape them over, but um, I forget now why I cut it. I think I cut it, oops, I have to be careful with this blade. I, maybe I cut them both because that way I don't have a, a double, double thickness underneath. So maybe I'll do that. Yeah, why don't I go ahead and yeah, why don't I do that? I'll just cut, I'll cut them both. But now this time, instead of saving the line, I'm actually gonna get rid of it, right? Because I saved it in the other one. So that we end up evenly. Um, and now just to check real quick, I'm going to see if this square here is, uh, you know, is nice and even. It should be, there we go. Yeah, I mean, it's printers, as you might know, are not perfect. So sometimes they'll, they'll print slightly. I think what I'm actually now paying more attention than anything is that these lines are really nice and aligned more than anything else, okay? Um, especially since I'm really not going to draw the left cube, right? I'm just going to draw the right one. So, yeah. Okay. And then I would, I would just use tape right on top. Well, what I do is I put a couple of pieces in the front, but because I have to draw on the front, um, this fingerprint. <laughs> I put most of the tape on the back like this. What I do is I hold it down because this tends to pull up the paper, the electrostatic. So just hold that down with your other fingers and then tape it. Otherwise it makes, it makes a mess and everything just kind of jumps up. Okay, almost ready to go. Okay, even though, well, if you have a, um, if you have a straight edge or a T-square, it would be nice if you could align this also with the, um, but now, well, why don't I do it since I have it? <laughs> okay, but let's see if, it, if it's somewhere near. Yeah, it's pretty near. So I'm just gonna, just gonna make it be nice and nice and square. It will save me a little time, uh, but I need to see my station point. I don't know if you can see at the bottom, it's still not visible and I need to see that, which means I need to go a little bit higher. Okay. As a reminder, again, I will have another video later of just completely doing it completely freehand, but um, this is good. Yeah, everything is there now. You wanna like kind of spread it out to the corners as you're doing that so that it gets nicely not stretched really, because the paper can't really stretch, but um, you know, nice and flat. All right. So now I'll just get my uh, triangles out. 
Um, I think these are nice because then you can see the drawing underneath. Um, and once again, at the risk of becoming really boring, I'm just going to repeat once again what we're going to do. Okay, so we have we have the object in plain plain view located. This is bigger; it's four inches instead of three, but it's located there. It's touching the picture plane. And we have a station point at a certain distance. We have the horizon line um, placed above the object, right? If this is the object, so that we're looking down at the cube um, and not like in front of it, which would be below the cube, okay? And we place the station point in this case, yeah, exactly, exactly in front of that leading edge. And this, is your 3060 construction with the triangle, right? And to find the first edge, which is here, we project this height and then we just draw it like this, okay? And to find the two edges, we project down from the corners to the station point where it intersects the picture plane we bring it down and we get that edge. We do the same on the right. And that gives us the two side edges, okay? The back is then found just by crossing those two lines from here, oops, from there and from there. So I'm just gonna do that now. And I'm gonna go a little fast because, um, well, because again, the, it just gets the same process step gets repeated a few times, all right? So I'm going to take my, um, I forget which one has the softer for the video, which I think it's this one, H. Yeah, let's just say that's good. Okay. Actually, maybe HB. So you should be using again, uh, 2H, which is harder. HB, there we go. But for, but the, for the video, pencil is a little light. So I'm using HB, which is number two. I'm actually going to leave it alone, even if it's not super sharp, because just sharpen it a little bit like that. Well, I'm so used to have it sharp that now I can't, <laughs> um, I'm not crazy about <laughs> not being sharp. So let me, let me sharpen it. Um, it will get dull pretty fast actually. So, sorry, it's one of those like automatic things, you know, you try to do something, but because you're so used to do it the other way. All right. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly darken um, the object here. Oh, by the way, here, you could, if you want it, um, actually you should draw your, your top view of your cube. Okay, so whatever, whatever that, let's see, we're doing it now. Yeah, I'm doing this view. I'm doing this view, right? So just draw it. So in this case, you can see basically I would have um, all the lines here, one, two, three, but only the middle, line, only the diagonal line there. So I'm actually going to draw that um, just as a, except I don't have the points, but I can quickly find that using diagonals. Sorry, let me, um, let me just do that. Okay, because in the, um, in the final version of your drawing, I want you to show both, okay? I want you to show your, your perspective view, but also the plan view. And you can see, yeah, that's it. Okay, I could have copied it from this because I've already drawn it. <laughs> so those are the lines that represent, that represent my cube, right? In other words, I don't have a line there or there because that's a, that's a bigger surface. So let me just quickly, Draw that. My this printout is slightly smaller than the full size, so I can't quite measure it. Um, 
So instead, I'm using diagonals to to get my my middle points. And then I can do this. Because I'm not really going to use these that much. It's you know it's not really critical, right? I really just need the corners. Um, but it's going to make the drawing look better. So let's just draw this. And for this drawing, again, just make sure you upload the construction as well. Um, because what you want to do for this is to put it on a, a separate piece of tracing paper, right? So that I can just see the clean, the clean version. Okay, almost getting there. That. Oh, actually, I realized. Let's see, do I do that right? But actually, this line is not there. I don't know if you can see it. This is that flat area that because because it's all flat we get rid of that extra line in, the, in this particular case maybe your design will have that line but um, so okay Um, yeah, so, okay, once we have this, then we, you know, because I've already drawn it, of course, I know it, but if you're, if you're doing yours, um, you'll need to, well, you'll need to start seeing it, right? So this will help you see the shape better. Okay, so that's that's my cube now. Um, okay, so I'll just go ahead and start. Um, the first thing I need to do is just just bring down this this vertical line because again, I'm I'm sitting I'm standing probably <laughs> sitting right in front of it, so I can just drop. In other words, the axis of my view is corresponding exactly to that edge, right? Um, It's actually more convenient now for me to just use two triangles. Um, the printout, you know, might get distorted too. Again, I don't trust printers. So, um, you know, bear that in mind if you find that there is a few slight, you know, variations in terms of the straightness of the drawing. But so right now that's, that's gonna be my other edge. Okay, my so-called leading edge. Wow. Let's just use this. And now I project the height. And where that crosses is my first. So this is exactly, really, again, exactly the same process we did in the previous, uh, previous drawing, right? The tutorial. So now that I have it, I just simply connect it to the varnishing point. And because I'm afraid that I might make a mistake again and go, to the diagonal point instead, what I'll do is now I'll make a nice, make a nice red circle around that. Don't touch the actual spot because that needs to stay clean, but you can mess around it a lot. Okay. This again. Okay, so that's it. So now that I have that, I'll go to the to the two vanishing points. Let's see. And once again, I'm just gonna do the right cube, okay? I'm gonna draw every line very dark, but again, you can draw them light because 
because you're not be you're not going to be recording a video. Okay. So two to that side and two to this side. This really helps, like marking, you know, making a big uh, something that tells you where to go every time. Right. Um, okay. So now the two edges. I just need to bring those. I need to figure out what those are here. Okay. So again, I go from those two corners to the station point, which is down here. I hope, I hope the video doesn't get cut off, but the frame, but it's down there, okay? Uh, and which is six inches from the uh, picture plane. And and usually I make a, a darker mark there so that I know where it is. I do the same on the right side from the corner there to the station point. Where it hits the picture plane, right there and right there. I'm going to bring it down. At this point, I'm going to use two triangles like that. All right. Wait, that doesn't look right, does it? No. <laughs> okay. Too short because it's this part right there. One and then the other one is up here. That. And so now I have the two sides, okay? So I can start darkening it. Um, yeah, and actually come to think of it because this is your construction drawing, you can draw, I guess, most of the stuff pretty dark because you're gonna later trace it with a piece of tracing paper, just a design. So it, it doesn't really matter. Um, it does help to see things better if you keep different layers of different lightness and different darknesses of, of, of pencil because um, because there'll be a lot to keep track of, right? So now that I have these two sides, I can take these two corners and I could do this construction, but I'm not gonna do it because, um, well, I always say that and then I do it because I don't need it uh, because I already have that information. But again, let's just do it to see if it matches from both, from both constructions. So this way it would hit here and it would come down um, somewhere there. So now this line will have to match when I bring the other two across. Um, the cube is not seen very much. I mean, you're above it, but not by much, but because we're only drawing, um, we're kind of, you know, we're kind of, almost at the top of the queue, right? Meaning almost, we almost don't miss the top, you know, we saw a little bit, but because we're only drawing the bottom of the queue, then, you know, we, we get a more open view of it, right? So keep, keep that in mind too. Right now it's gonna look pretty tight at the top there. Um, anyway, I'm just going to connect the two points I found earlier to the opposite vanishing points. And that should give me the top. Um, and it should match, should match this line right here. Let's see if that's true. Well, I barely make it with this. I need my longer, longer triangle. I mean, ruler. Yeah, this helps to have at least a 12 inch, 12 inch ruler. Yeah, perfect. Nice. This makes me feel good because again, it's printed up. Yeah, it's right there. A little bit off. Um, 
can't quite see it probably at this distance, but so now that that is done, I'm going to darken it. And I do need to see the back uh, because we're going to draw we're going to draw the design going around, right? So you have to have it kind of as a as an X-ray view, right? Which is what I did with with my cube by making it out of um, acetate. Uh, but you don't have that. You have to. It's a little bit hard for harder um, because it's it's solid, right? So now that I can do the same, what I did here at the top, I can do the same at the bottom, and we definitely should do that because that will now complete the cube. Um, oh, actually, this line is already drawn. It's a little light in the video, but and it matches pretty nicely too. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll put a piece of tracing paper and show you that when you get to this point, um, you don't need to do construction from here anymore. You can just do construction from here and then use diagonals, okay? Um, so, and then definitely what you want to have too is have a sequence, you know, handy of your design, okay? So your design, whatever it is, make sure it's correct and then pick the view where it's symmetrical, right? Which would probably be, you know, either the first two or the, or the, or the second two, remember, because we, we turned them. Um, this is very important because now as I draw it, I'll be moving again in a kind of like battleship game mode where I'll say, okay, I need to go one down and two across. And um, let's see, it's already 10 or five. So we might, have to, we might have to split this video two in two parts, but let's see, let's see how far we get. So, um, so I have that cube, let me take the tracing paper again. Um, well, I had the piece here. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so now that I have, by the way, working with layers of tracing paper might help. Um, the two parts in the front are easier because they're there. The two parts in the back are harder. So later, when we when we do the back, what you might want to do is also just just do that separately, you know, on a separate piece of trace, so that you can keep all those four faces separately. So let me just quickly show you now in sketch form, um, without constructing with the ruler, how you would do the, the grid here without needing to do all this construction. It's actually you know, quite simple. Um, if, if I was gonna do the construction, I would take that midpoint here. I would bring it down like that. And then where it crosses, I would bring it down and I would make my line here on the face of the cube, right? Uh, but I don't need to do that because if I draw, because I know that's the middle in perspective, right? Which means it's further, it's closer to this edge than it's closer to this edge because this half is gonna look bigger and this half, and this half is gonna look smaller. So instead of doing that every time, all, what I can do is just draw two diagonals. See, I was a little off and that gives you the center, okay? Once I get that, then I can draw, you know, using the triangles straight, I can draw this line and coming from here, and now I'm gonna to try to do it, you know, freehand. It's somewhat, it doesn't, I don't think it quite matches this line in the back, but let's say it's maybe there. So that's my first grid. And then I can just repeat the process. So um, another thing I can do is because I know that this is, if, that this is correctly three inches, these are the distances here, which I think are three quarters. So these spots, in the front are also even. So I could almost just measure them and make them all four, one, two, three, four, just even, right? 
that would be another way to do it. Um, anyway, if I did one more diagonal, I would get that same point because by connecting now those diagonals to the vanishing point, you know, I would end up also there. Okay, so now I'm just gonna do it again quickly freehand just to show you that. Okay, so that would be the one in the front. And then I would maybe draw, maybe in this case, maybe I would do little like markings. Um, and I do the same thing on the right side. Okay, I do two diagonals, I get the center, drop it down vertically. These I may go, make go over there. And I do the same here. This is already known, so I can just do that. And that gives me, you can see from these other diagonals, that gives me the other spots. Now it's gonna be a little rough here because I'm doing it freehand, but in other words, you can see how quickly I did the grid because, um, well, the grid is really just four points, right? So I could do that four times, but this is faster. Okay. And since I'm doing this as a process now freehand, but you're gonna be doing it with the tool, let me, let me just complete it, okay? So that um, it's a good, it's a kind of good overall uh, view. Um, okay, one last thing, well, not one last thing, but a very important thing is the center of the cube, right? The center of the cube, you do by connecting two opposite corners, you know, far apart corners. In other words, not corners on a face, but corners at the opposite ends, at the opposite corners of the cube, okay? So let me use a different color to mark that. That's very important. Um, you could also find it by like taking the center of these two faces and projecting it across, but the diagonal is more precise because it's further apart. So you're, do, you're doing a kind of a triangulation that's based on a, on a much bigger um, piece of, I don't know, rope, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna connect opposite corners of the cube. And I'm gonna find, and now I'm gonna do it, you know, with a ruler because I wanna make sure that's correct. So I don't draw the whole thing, so I save lines. So that's the center of the cube. And if you notice, it is somewhere, um, somewhere between, um, well, in the middle of, let's see, how can I explain this? I have to draw it much better than explaining it. If your cube is like this, Okay, that's the center of the cube. So in other words, it's, it's ending up, it has to be inside this, okay, inside this like smaller shape. Okay, so I have that, I'll need that soon. But before I do that now, here's where tracing paper really helps. You could use tracing paper and use tools on top of, on top of tracing paper. So now I'm doing it freehand to be a little faster, but, um, just because I want to finish this project. So now we have to do the two, the two parts in the back because we have to do the full, the first circle, right? So I'm going to take another piece of tracing paper and do that, okay? So let's see, I used blue, what color did I use? Was it this one? Yeah, blue indigo. Um, so I did the two front ones and now I'm gonna do the two back ones. Okay, that's the back. So same process, much, you know, it's just faster. If I do two diag diagonals, I get the vertical. And then for this one, I'm gonna have to go over here, right? So I connect that to the center here. Mind you, actually not mind you, I'm gonna do it. If I keep this and I put this on top and now it's sort of a funny, you know, funny perspective. Um, 
But if I do this, I already have a bunch of information on the sides here that I can already use. So I'm gonna do that, right? Um, okay, so now I'm connecting all these lines to here. Again, if I had diagonals, I could do it this way. Okay, so I know I did the same thing here. One, two, three. And then with just one diagonal, I can now find the other spots. Okay. Um, so that's good. And so now I'm just gonna show you a trick which I've already shown for the cube isometric, but I remember that video was not so great in terms of the resolution, but this really, really could help a lot. Um, you can now draw this pattern by doing this sort of battleship uh, business. But if you did this little exercise first in tracing paper, let me just show you a cool way that I figured out. Again, this is when, during the pandemic last year when I said, okay, how can I make this easier? Um, to basically just open it up, but instead of being square like this, it's gonna be you know, in perspective, except it's gonna be flat. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take these two here. In my case, there are the two on the right which are these two. Uh, we'll definitely split this video in two parts. Um, so these are these two, right? And I'm gonna draw that pattern. You can see how easy it's gonna be to draw that because it's right here, right? But these two, which is gonna be the back, um, it's a little trickier, why? Because it's actually reversed, right? Because I'm not now, you know, I'm not looking at it from the outside, but I'm looking at it from the inside. So in order to draw it correctly, what I can do is actually I can do this. I can actually open it up as if it were essentially my, my spread right there, okay? And I can draw it exactly like that. And then I can fold it back and that will show me exactly what I need to draw. So let's do that. Having said that, what I'll do is I'll zoom in a little bit so that it looks a little bit a little bit easier to follow. Okay. Okay, once again, what I'm doing now is I'm gonna sketch my pattern on my cube in perspective following my my particular design, right? So in my case, what I have is this view, right? I'm looking at this. Um, this view right here. And that will be fairly easy to do, right? Because I can just take the spots. Um, let's see, actually this one, this one, this one, and that one. Then I go around and I find, okay, two across and one down, it's here. Then I go up to here, to here, and to there. Okay. And you can see that now, oh, so now I could already start connecting to the center of the cube, but I'm gonna wait. Okay, I'm gonna wait because I wanna do the entire thing. Um, once again, now to do the back, you know, it gets a little complicated because things start to overlap and that's why separating it and now doing this part um, separately, it's, it's, it's better. And if I were to do it kind of, again, with the battleship system, um, Keep everything in, in, in view here. Uh, 
um, I would have to pick it up from, from this part, right? Which is here, which is really means is that the opposite side because this reconnects. So if I were to do battleship again here, I would say, okay, now, now I'm coming around and I say, okay, one across. So it'll be here, right? One across. Then I go one across and one down, one across and one down and so forth and so on. But here's the thing, if I did the other system that we discussed just a moment ago, where I actually, um, where I actually unfold this out so that it is in a sense a repetition of that. What I mean by that is this, let me, let me cut it. So in other words, I'm I'm all I'm opening my cube now. I'm taking the parts and I'm just like opening it up. So in this case, what it means is I'm taking this part, which is in the back, and opening it this way, which happens to match my design, you know, my particular thing. I mean, maybe you could open it the other way, depending if you're starting on the left instead. Um, so let's do that. So this is my hinge. And that hinge, I'm just going to like open it like that, like a door. And so this will be the continuation um, of, um, like that. Okay. So I hope this helps. It's a little bit roundabout, but it does make it uh, more sort of intuitive in the sense that now I'm looking at the cube all from the outside, right? Because I'm, I'm going around and because I opened it this way, I'm looking at the outside of the cube before I'm looking at it inside. So because now this is all outside, I can simply copy my pattern, right? I can just copy it like that. Um, there, to here, to here, to here, to here, and to there. And that is great because now I basically have solved my cube in perspective. I don't know, it's almost like a, I don't know, I guess you could call it a cubist view. You know, you're seeing everything all at once. So now that I've done that, and I'm pretty confident it's going to work because it's matching, you know, that's straight. This is in perspective. Um, now I can close it back, put it behind the cube again, right? Like this. Right there, and I'm going to actually quickly tape it. So just need one little bit. Um, and this is where it looks like it's gonna get, now let's let's say you've done this. What, if you have done this, like I, what I just did with tracing paper, then what I would do without worrying about the, all the lines going to the center yet, just redraw it here, okay? Just, just simply like, now you know what you're looking for, you know, redraw it here, you know, do your grids on each side. Um, if it helps do this with tools, you know, putting two layers separately. Um, and now let's look at the cube itself. And because it starts getting a little sort of intimidating, it's like, okay, now what? Okay, now we do know that we just need to connect every line to the, every line to the center, every corner, right? It's gonna go to the center. And I built this model to show you that really you ought not to think too much. In fact, think as little as possible until the very end, meaning um, don't worry about what it will look like, okay? So what you wanna do now is just like draw every possible line. So I, I did this because I wanted to show you that. Um, Yeah. 
So this is the, this is what I need to draw, right? And once you've done the outside, just do all the lines, just go to the center. Don't worry about it, like what it will look like because, because you can't see it. For one, you don't have a plexiglass cube, but, but, but I just wanna show you, you know, they, they all go to the center. You have no other choice, right? Um, but in order to figure out how it will actually look, um, then you need tracing paper again. So the thing to do is draw all the lines, like imagine you're drawing this now, just connect everything, every single line to the center without worrying it. And then later with tracing paper um, and looking at your cube, oops, just see, put this back if I can. Then look at it again, and, and, and I'll do this now in the drawing, but what I'll do then is like, oh, okay, now that I've done all those lines, which I haven't done here yet. In fact, why don't I do that? So that I put my, you know, I do what I say one should do. Um, let's see, maybe we'll use a different color. Right, so again, I'm, I'm not, I don't know. I don't worry about it. I don't, I don't know what, what it will look like. I'm just gonna connect everything. And this is true, whether you're doing it with sketch, sketch, you know, sketching or whether you're using tools. Um, however, you see that as I go through the center, um, I am gonna meet the other spot, right? The opposite spot, you see that? Okay, so that that's a that's a clue that things are good, right? Right there. Okay, so every line that I draw from opposite points goes through the center. Uh, let's see, this one is going to go here. It, yeah, it's really as long as you go straight through the center, you'll be fine. Um, now, some lines are a little trickier, like this one, because it gets a little tighter, but they're still good, they're still there. Oops, missing there a little bit. What else have I left there? Okay, now I could do this very corner, but remember, I, I know from my cube that that very corner is kind of all flat. So I'm gonna leave that alone. Okay, I kind of know already. Um, if, if you do that extra line, if you happen to have such a line, you know, remember later to, to not do it, okay? So, and now I might even darken these lines a little bit so that I can see them a little better. Okay. So now I have all the information and now I need to figure out really what it looks like, right? What's hidden, what's not. And that's when you use your eye and your model, right? And use tracing paper. So um, focus that again. So now what I would do is uh, one more piece of tracing paper. I hope I don't run out. Okay, and before I even look at my cube, I can say, well, I know that the front is in the front. So I know that this part is easier to draw because I see it, right? So I start with that. Um, the great thing about tracing paper is if you make a mistake, you can always correct it and also you can lift it so you can see what you're doing and not see um, your construction. There. So I'm gonna start again by the part, from the part in the front that I know is, um, easier, right? So, and now this is definitely sketch level before you do the final, you know, with the straight lines, because, um, yeah, because I'll do it until I get it right. And then I go and do the, the nice drawing, okay? With the clean lines on top of yet another tracing paper. So now I can start, you know, 
by the way, take your model and really look at it and say, okay, now I'm gonna try to, I have to do it here. Um, you know, what does it look like? So close one eye, try to, try to visualize. And because now it is in perspective, it will actually match, right? Right now, um, you know, I can move this around in such a way that it really is gonna basically match, uh, match the drawing, which if you recall, it wasn't the case with the axonometric. Um, so why don't I just do the part that I know for sure because it's in the front is gonna be, and you can see already from this that some other features are gonna be all hidden. So whatever is behind here is gonna be hidden. Um, now I kind of do a little bit of trial and error, right? At this point I can say, well, I can look at it again and I can say, okay, I see the back, right? Those two triangles. So maybe, maybe just maybe, you know, those are visible. It might be like that. And then I keep going and I say, okay, that line goes down. Um, just like, again, looking at your model might show you that that's the case. Sorry. It's a little bit hard to see here because I need to move the camera back again, but let me just finish it. Um, Okay, that, that looks pretty good. I think that's, that's correct. So now that's, that's my solution. That's now how I would build it, you know, in the, in the, um, in the, in the actual drawing, okay? Um, we're gonna take a little break and in the second part of the video, we will um, show, do this in, uh, in uh, with the tools, okay?